We play. We fight. We conquer. Welcome back to The Freak Show. I'm your host, Bumpy McSquiggums, and today we get to dive back on into Encased and hopefully see a little bit more of the game. I know the last uh, last episode, there wasn't a lot going on there. We didn't we didn't really get to see too, too much. A little bit of the storyline, kind of what's going on, and, you know, the setting was set, the character was created, and now it's time to hopefully live with the choices that we've made. And we'll see how this all plays out. We have... Ludo, what? Ludovico Nuzi. Come here. Come on now, or you'll miss everything. A cheerful man in a white lab coat grabs you by the sleeve. Okay. A badge reading Ludovico Nuzi, scientific Nuzzi. analyst, export department, dangles loosely on his clean uniform, which still smells pungently of washing powder. Old washing powder. It's not detergent? Cool. Look over there. He points upward with a sharp, wide gesture and hands you his field binoculars. Um, okay. Let's take the binoculars. Look where he's pointing, I guess. You raise the binoculars to Oh, the storm. Under fourfold magnification, the whirling cloud above the rust-colored plains looks even stranger. Its core glows with flickering green light and flashes rhythmically. And that rhythm seems to form a complicated pattern. Nazi bends close to your ear. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Do you want me to bring some filters? If we intercept the red and blue spectrums, we'll see something amazing. It's like a signal, some kind of message. Reconnaissance 30. Stop watching the storm and look at the horizon. Um, Sure, we'll try that one. Without tearing your gaze away from the binoculars, you turn around slowly, studying the dome's horizon. It's somewhat unexpected that the dome looks horribly empty. Your eyes find some construction pits dug directly in the sand, and concrete blocks laid beside them. There are almost no roads, or not sealed ones. Only one highway with yellow surface marking stretches among the sand drifts. Hmm. Ask him what scientific analysis or analyst export department means. Yeah, that's a good that's a good one. The scientist looks blankly at you, then down at his lab coat. Ah, this? This? He lets out a blaring laugh. <laughs> I just envision that's how he laughs. Ludovico points at the building behind him. I work in Concord Station, categorizing relics. My job is to classify them by rarity. Nice. Then the blues package them, silvers issue the documentation, and oranges move them to the cargo capsule. Just like the one you arrived in. Sweet. What do I do? I get to, I get to crack some skulls? Nazi points upward. Then the capsule takes the relics way up there, all the way to the spire, then to crystal sands by the funicular. Oh. They get auctioned hmm. off and turned into money. It's not like I endorse this, but... We all like ourselves a good paycheck, right? That's true. That's true. All right, so I I don't know why I didn't bother to check this beforehand, but I, I realize that this is a thing that's kind of come into prominence over the past five, maybe even ten years. Um, I'm trying to think, was Pillars of Eternity the first to really do this? I'm sure there was other games before, but uh, where you have extra context menus where you can hover over them and it gives you a little bit more of a breakdown. So, for instance, the spire, the transit station built around the aperture at the top of the dome. Relics are moved up to it. The capsules with new employees, food, equipment, descend from it. Then we got the crystal sands at the city, uh, sorry, a city at the foot of the dome. It is from here, fresh provisions, weapons, equipment, and new Cronus employees are delivered to the spire station. And finally, the funicular. The City of Sand standing at the foot of the dome and the Spire Station are connected by the line of the passenger and freight funicular. Specifically equipped cabins ply along the line laid directly on the surface of the dome, transporting Crotus Foundation employees and cargo. A lot of the same stuff there. He offers you his binoculars once again. Do you want to have a look at the Spire? It's amazing. But then you can look at the Spire anytime. Now that sandstorm... That's what's truly amazing. Yep. No, Nazi I gotta go. Looks from you to the capsule and to the landing terminal entrance. He flings his arms up. Oh, Miss Goosey. 
Excuse me. I'm so sorry. You'd better get going or you'll be late for check-in. Your colleagues are already inside. And the storm is growing stronger. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, excuse me. The storm is growing stronger. The white mutters in fascination, eyes glued to his binoculars, which is fixed on the spinning whirl of clouds. Interesting. And I was starting to get bored. No, and you were starting to do what now? Lowers his binoculars, maelstrom is getting even stronger. Isn't it marvelous? Uh, uh huh. You better get to the station and you don't forget to register or they won't let you on the bus. He shouts over the growing howl of the wind. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, can we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Transition through the door. Whatever these fantasists call uh, the dome, an alien colony ship, a gift for humanity from another world, the remnants of Atlantis, a prison for dark forces, a magical laboratory of the ancient Egyptians. Personally, I think the definition doesn't matter. What we are going to do with it, now that's what matters. The universe talks broadcast. Indeed. My story done got updated. Quests. Throughout the game, you'll perform various tasks, some of which lead you through the story, as well as others that reveal different aspects of life under the dome. You can always find out the task status and read the details in the data section or the L key. Okay. Use the door. Hello, sir. The young blue is closely studying a communication schematic in his care caris care whatever a bundle of wires is hanging from an open fuse box nearby he smells strongly of cheap cigarettes his shiny badge says tu yin yuan mm -hmm. communications engineer i'm listening he looks away from his screen offering you a hand hello can i help you that's what he's doing uh, he taps lightly on the screen. I'm trying to calculate the optimal route for telecommunication cables. These cables connect the entire dome. Here at Concord, they form a hub and run to the spire. Oh, that's interesting. His face turns very serious. This cable is the only thing connecting the dome to civilization. And if that happens to break, that engineer looks at you meaningfully. Therefore, my mission is to ensure a stable connection and secure line, which is impossible without proper documentation. The way they're doing it here is a shame. A person could do time for that back where I'm from. Huh. I'm not a blue wing, so I have nothing. Say so that you don't see the point of his complaint. Kronos has created an, uh, an impressive communication system indeed. Ask what about it is a shame, in his opinion. Uh, assumes a disapproving expression. The cables are laid in properly, and various factors are negatively affecting the signal strength. Wild animals damage the equipment as well. With a developed professional culture and quality control system, most of these problems could be solved in short order. What animals are you talking about? He looks around and lowers his voice. They don't tell you new ones much. I suppose it's because of some security order, but in my opinion, this whole thing reeks of sabotage. And in theory, some silver should be imprisoned for that. Okay, okay. Sorry, I got distracted. You were asking about animals? Wolpers. Uh, huge, bald shrews. Very unpleasant creatures. Can I help you with anything else? The blue adjusts his collar. Uh, ask his opinion about Concord. Uh, he tugs at the blue collar, cutting into his neck. Uh, the idea itself is impressive, but the execution suffered from some failures. It's obvious the capitalistic system is obsolete and cannot support such grand-scale projects. Oh, yeah. Thanks. I uh, bid you farewell with a firm handshake. Thank you for understanding. I'm used to getting distracted and uh, sloppy, especially on such an important issue. Returns to his calculations on nice his chat. screen. Yeah, it was a nice chat with you, buddy. Give me uh, some, some food for thought, you know? Oh, my goodness. I can search the trash bin. Oh, I found 40 combons. I guess I'm going to take those and... The third letter from Cronus. I've taken all of it. I didn't realize there was going to be that much uh, stuff. Vega drinks vending machine. Uh, oh, oh, oh. 
That was my. I, I always expect the thing on the left to be what I'm. Yeah, I got you. Are you really walking over to my. Dude, you're killing me here. All right. Ooh, the semi transparent light panel of the Vega drinks vending machine is adorned with a silhouette of a dancing go go girl. There's a list of products for sale inside the illuminated recess in the right part. Cherry flavored shwow. Their show, I guess. Soda. Shwow. I like I like my, my version better. Beef flavored noodle. Morning Dunes Lager. Dark Secret Stout. Wayward Cigarates. I'm just gonna walk away. No, them beef noodles don't sound too bad. Oh. Thought this would happen. Hi, Monty James. What's going on, buddy? A silver wearing thick, glittering spectacles is sitting on an orange couch, nervously fingering his badge, which reads Monty James. A large suitcase rests at his feet with a leaflet about the dome perched on top. Hiya. Hey, uh, it's me, Amowen. It's not Amowen. He looks up and studies your face with a squint. Ah, it's you. How do you like it inside the dome? How do you know me? Say that you're not ready to answer that yet. Not enough time has passed for you to form a clear impression. Yeah. Stares moodily down at a suitcase. My first impression is unfortunately not very positive. They forgot to add my name to the new recruits manifest. Can you imagine? Offer to try to register him at the terminal? Are you for real? That would be incredibly kind of you. Maybe my optimism about this place and the people working here are, was justified after all. You evidently cheered him up quite a lot. Come back again. All right. We got a bathroom over here. We can use... Oh, there's a broken toilet. I don't think we want to use a broken toilet, do we? We might. We might want to use a broken toilet. Can we fix the toilet? We can search it. Ah, simple lockpick. That, that is often what I find in my toilet as well. Various actions, such as eating food or taking medicines, may impose certain status effects on you. Interesting. They can last for different times and be positive or negative. Some attacks and abilities can also apply a status effect that changes the characteristics of a target. For example, bleeding or poisoning will gradually reduce your health. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously it will. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh, status effects. Ah, the relief status effect. Here we go. Small amount of radiation has been purged from your body. Oh, well, yeah, not what I was expecting. There's some janitor gear here. There's a, there's a mop. Which can be used as a weapon, by the way. Her blank soap. And some disinfectant. I'm taking all of it. Uh, can I equip the weapon is the question. Uh, you know, I think they might look at me slightly humorously if I'm walking around with a a broom out, but you know what? I think that's fine. They don't call me the weekend warrior for nothing. What? Nothing? We don't we don't have a sink? Oh we do. Let's go to the wash basin here. Ah uh, vigorous. Go get him, Tiger. And uh, it's cozy in here. Nice and warm. Alright, there was some other stuff. What was over here? Um, a vacuum cleaner? Oh, yeah. Alright, I think I played around enough in the bathroom. Let's go move to some of the other places. Do I want to go here to the... Great, Mr. Whatever, Monty. Alright. Don't touch that door. Calm down, buddy. How do you Greetings, know? Newcomer. Come over here and register, please. All right. What's up, Dean? A tall receptionist watches you from behind his desk with a bored, haughty look. He waves impatiently at you to approach. As what? As you to approach? Can they just take out the... T Never mind. It's fine. The employee glances at you indifferently. His upper lip is ever so slightly curled in contempt. Yep, I get that. All new employees must register first thing. Uh, come up to the desk, please. The nameplate on the desk tells you you're talking with Dean Rayhead. 
Administrator. Subdean. The administrator slaps himself on the forehead. Ah, I almost forgot the regulation pre-registration greeting. Just a second. Oh boy. Ray Hutt produces a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from mm -hmm. beneath the desk. Really? Rewinds the tape to the beginning and presses play. The speakers explode with a harsh crackling sound over which the tick tick of a metronome slowly grows loud. Oh boy. Solemn music begins to play and the administrator's face takes on a serious expression. Dear employee, on behalf of the Cronus Foundation, I, Administrator Dean Rayhat, welcome you to your new life under the dome. Under the sea. Sorry. The administrator clears his throat and continues. By joining our company, you choose the path of science and progress. You are among mankind's best, and we ask that you live up to this. Dean squints down at the monitor. Deserve this title. Do your job honestly. Obey the law. Respect your colleagues and... The music fades and the administrator finishes his speech. And together we will build the best possible future for all mankind. For all mankind, yeah! Woo! Dean puts the tape recorder away. Now that we're done with the official greeting, I'll register you and upgrade your Selectron. Okay? Um... Say so you're ready and begin the registration. Look around. Ask him what you should do after. Look around. The committee ads didn't lie. The interior of Concord Station looks just like the glossy brochure. The high ceiling is finished with matte light panels. The floor is slightly scratched, but nevertheless washed to a mirror finish. Lights gleam soothingly. It's clean, cozy, and bright. Indeed. Dean stabs impatiently at the terminal keyboard. Name and age, please. Dean's hands hover over the keyboard. He gives you a nod. Dictate your information to him. Pass him a note upon which you've written out your information in advance. Enter the data into the terminal on your own. Uh, you don't have him a note. The administrator squints at the paper in his outstretched hand before setting it next to the keyboard and entering the information into the database. Rayhet scans the computer screen. So your position in the waiting list was 63,784. You've been assigned to Magellan Station. A special bus will bring you there after a series of briefings. Please pass me your Selectron so I can update the firmware. Okay. Dean snaps the docking port of your pass to a recess in the casing of his computer. The administrator returns your Selectron. Here you are. You now have first level clearance. As a Black Wing employee, you get access to the barracks, the armory, surveillance rooms, nice. remand centers, and other specialized facilities. Yeah, I do. All right, let's take a look at uh, what the Black Wing does exactly here. Cronus armed forces deployed for military and police operations for those who love uniforms, guns, and the smell of napalm in the morning. Yeah, we Dean do. Dean continues. All new employees have a short list of tasks to perform on arrival. Do you want to hear all the details or just the short version? Give me the details, man. Ray Hett nods and points at the ceiling. First, you need a set of combat gear. Talk yeah. to Sidney Maynard. He'll give you everything. Okay, cool. Combat gear all over it. Dean extends his second finger. Second, weapons. Ms. Margarita Takachenko is the clerk at the armory. After she dispenses your firearm, you'll need to head to the training zone for a brief weapons handling exam. I'm here for it, okay. The administrator straightens his third finger. According to the latest regulations, all employees must attend a briefing on psi abilities. Apply to instructor Andre Mihai. Okay. Psyche and Psy Energy. Psy Energy and Psy Abilities became a serious matter of discussion soon after the first experiments with the Forefathers' technologies. According to official data, today more than 78.4% of people under the dome exhibit Psy Abilities of various intensities that allow one to use tele and uh, pyrokinetics and to influence the interlocutor in one way or another. Fortunately, most of these abilities are weak. Scientists have found that for the presence of abilities, as well as for abilities to apply them for or their real use by others, a special characteristic of the body named Psych is responsible. Yes, yeah, Psych! Sorry. Greatest television show ever made. Sam. Dean extends his fourth finger and looks at you meaningfully. Did I tell you about the combat and tactical training? The fourth step is to visit instructor Winston Botherby. 
Sure, bother me. And finally, science is the overarching purpose behind everything we do here. Naturally. Go to Professor Van Alden to learn how to study relics, avoid anomalies, and catalog scientific knowledge. This training is mandatory for all wings, not just white. Dean finishes. Exciting. Dean catches himself. Oh, and when you're done with your trainings, proceed to the waiting room. From there, you'll travel to Magellan by bus. Okay, I just want to point out this says the chat matic here. I think that's awesome. Uh, okay, so everything's crystal clear and leave. The administrator looks up at you again. That is all. He reaches for the tape recorder, but thinks better of it. Protocol calls for a little welcoming preamble, but dash it all, that's nonsense. Welcome to Concord Station. I oh, appreciate you. As he's about to turn away, Dean suddenly remembers something. Oh yes, I sent your mail to your Kairos. Check your new messages. Well, that's all, I think. Uh-huh. Wasn't I supposed to talk about the, the guy that's sitting there? Hmm. Messages sent to you by various game characters are stored in the messages section of your Kairos. Messages from some employees, computers, employees' computers also end up there. All new messages are in the inbox tab and after reading are moved to the archived tab. Uh, what about Monty James? Shouldn't I talk to him about Monty? Dean gives you a short nod as you approach. Uh, hold on, let me go talk to him again. Oh. Monty sunk deep in thought and also in the cushions of the chair. As you approach, he greets you with a slight nod but remains immersed in his reverie. See ya. Like, I told him that I would help him, and then it doesn't give me the opportunity to help him. That seems like an oversight. What is this? Are you trying to hide? Oh, uh, no. You're trying to hide. Stealth mode, which is clearly H, uh, allows you to steal and move without being detected by your opponents. While in stealth mode, watch the detection indicator displayed above the character. Once the indicator is full, you will be dete detected. You can go into stealth mode only if no one can see you. Press the caps lock to display visible areas. Oh, caps lock? Really? You know what's sad is I don't even remember what caps lock is. I, I never, ever use it for anything. Is that caps lock? That's caps lock. Also, I, I, and I'm dating myself here, showing how old I am. Um, <laughs> I... Uh, the newer keyboards have decided to go away from a lot of the traditional shift, tab, caps lock, enter, backspace, and they all have symbols now. And while most of them are fine, I understand what tab is, I understand what shift is, I understand what enter, backspace, all of them, I just never really knew what caps lock was. And I'm like, isn't it on the left side? There's nothing that says it, but I, I found it. So you guys can mock me. I'm an old man. What can I say? So that's his visibility range? Oh, oh no, that's his visibility range. Oh god, god. So, so what's with the little red thing? That's cool though. Just right, Mr. Monty James. With luck like yours, I wouldn't spend any money on the lottery. So, if I don't get inside of his red bubble, he's not going to notice me sneaking around? Weird. Weird, 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 weird thing. Okay, well, let's unhide. That's it's interesting, though. I mean, I, I, li I like a good hide mechanic. I am a fan of that. The Kronos Foundation. Oh, we can use the terminal. I know we're going real slow, guys and gals. I don't care. I want to have some fun. I want to check all this stuff. And I just, you know, I just want to have a good time. So we might not be getting directly into combat. We might not be doing, you know, the fastest playthrough. But I'm going to walk around. I'm going to explore. I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to take my, my own time, my own pace to do things. And I think everyone accepts that. They understand that that's how it's going to go. Throughout the game, you will often have to encounter, or sorry, interact with various computers. Terminals contain useful information allow you to turn on disabled mechanisms and open locked doors. If you accidentally or intentionally killed one of the main characters, then information on how to progress further in the game can almost always be found in the terminal. In their terminal. Oh, no. Okay, Kronos uh, logo flickers pale blue on the terminal display. Oh, I can register. Oh. Oh, no. Don't register them in the orange. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not that mean. 
You enter Monty James' data into the system, noting that the registration form uh, for Silver has several extra fields. Apparently, Colonel sees its managers as a special cast. Once you've double-checked your input, you press Send. See, I'm glad that I went and played around with this. With a beep, the system accepts the data and redirects you to the main menu. Okay. Main menu, user page. Greetings, employee. Enter a command to select an option. Download your personal mail to your Keras. Uh, read the latest Kronos news. Check your employment status. Or log out. Uh, I'm going to go with two real quick. Check, check my status. Black wing, clearance level one assignment. Uh, procedural actions. Receive uniform weapons. Complete military training. Complete scanner training. And report to administration. All right. Well, I'm going to go let him know that we, we handled it. And then he should be able to go talk to the dude. Because uh, we're awesome. Right Monty, yep, hey, guess what? I added you to the database, my friend. Monty takes off his spectacles, rests them on a cushion beside him, and envelops you in a big hug. Hmm. He puts his glasses back on. Uh, thank you for such an impressive example of cooperation with a stranger. Perhaps the dome really is a special place. Come back again. Why do I feel like I just sealed everyone's fate and that Monty is some sort of horrible monster that's going to literally cause every single bad thing that's about to happen? I just, I, I definitely get that vibe from him. He seems like a terrible person. But, hey, you know what? He asked me to do something, I did it. I feel okay about that. All right. What's up, Anna Leroy? I'm all ears. You see a slim, cheek, bony, silver woman with a red warning lamp, what? In her hands. On the lapel of her perfectly ironed suit is a badge that says, Anna Leroy Administrator. The girl waves her lamp in the air, trying to attract some attention. Valued employees, according to the administrative order of September 14th, 1976, the waiting area may be accessed through the regular staff corridor. Please be advised that this rule does not apply to newly arrived employees. She pauses and begins to cough. Crap, I should cut down on the smokes. Good day, new employee. <laughs> uh, the silver nods like she's depressed. She, she seems to have just noticed you. Ask you to go through the hall to the waiting room. I, I feel like she just told us that we couldn't, but let's ask anyway. Anna gives you a gentle poke on the chest with her warning lamp, forcing you to take a step back. Am I speaking gibberish or what? This rule does not apply to newbies. You need to go through training and... <coughs> Persuader, you don't need training because you already know every you know everything already. Red from coughing, the silver waves her hand helplessly. <laughs> oh, God. Come on. Don't forget to sign a waiver. Just go. Bye-bye. Well, that was easy. All right. I made myself in, uh, yeah, into a... Uh, I, I found... Worked myself... I don't know. I got myself into a place I probably shouldn't be in. Found a toolbox. Give me a hammer. Ah, oh, crowbar even better. All right. Now, let's take a look. Is there a way of... It's not a weapon. This is a weapon. This is not. A, I, I love how my broom does 16 to 31 damage. That sounds from. And it's got a 200% critical hit rate. That sounds phenomenal. Like, I, I absolutely love that. Well, folks, we didn't make it very far. But you know what? I had fun anyway. We got to kind of find out a little bit more of the lay of the land. We got to talk to some people. We got to use the bathroom, which is great. I actually need to do that in real life. So I'm probably going to do that when I get done with this episode. And, yeah, we kind of broke into this horrible-looking area that we probably shouldn't be in. Uh, I don't... Is this the place it's supposed to... Like, we're supp like why do we want to go here? This seems terrible. This does seem like a waiting area, though. But, like, wow, what what a trek to get there, right? This, this does not look uh, pleasant, for uh, lack of a better term. There's also a safe, which I'm very curious about. All right, folks, uh, in the next episode, we'll continue on. We gained some experience doing all the chicanery things that we did, the chicanerous stuff, and uh, I'm here for it. I, I can't wait to play some more, learn a little bit more about what we're getting ourselves into, and eventually going through the basic training, getting our combat on in, and just seeing how the game progresses. All right, folks, until the very next episode, I have been your host, Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by the Freak Show. We play, we fight, we conquer.